Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming. It's about 2.10 on April 30th, and today we are going to be doing how to use your own modem for Cable RDS Solid Home. You can see I have about what I usually have for my programs, but that's okay. We will press on. And I will go ahead and share my screen and do the presentation anyway, and someone will be thrilled to be able to watch this online at some point in time. So let's go ahead and get started. So here we are. Um, so the premise, uh, the premise of this program is uh, using your own cable modem. Now, most of the time you get your internet from Xfinity, Comcast, or AT&T, or WOW, or, or one of these places. And what happens is you have to pay for it each month. You have to rent the equipment. And there's a way to use your own equipment if you want to, and it'll just save you money. So what we're going to be doing today is, you know, a basic overview of the whole thing, like I just said. Um, some reasons why you might want to do it, what companies allow it, what equipment you need, and somewhat of an example if it's something that someone out there wants to do. Like, not sure if I even need these headphones. So, here is uh, an example of a bill from Comcast Xfinity. So as you can see here by the circle, so most of the times on your bill, you're going to see something similar to this. And it'll say either in this case, it says wireless gateway, or possibly you'll see something that says equipment rental or equipment fee or something like that. And then basically it's just always there and you kind of forget about it and that's life. Um, now years ago it used to be less, uh, so in this, even in this example, uh, it says $10. Um, here's a, a newer one that I was actually able to procure from two months, um, actually this month. So look at this person's bill and you'll find that, uh, okay, so they have some kind of package, but don't worry about that. Their base plan is $33, uh, $30, excuse me. And they're also paying an equipment fee of $14. So think about for this person, literally their bill should be $30. Instead, their actual bill is $44 because $14 goes to this equipment rental. Um, that's literally, you know, you're paying 50% more on your bill because of this equipment rental. Uh, you might say, well, you know, maybe your bill's a lot higher. I've seen people with like ridiculous bills and you know, it's like for just home internet, it's like $150 or some insane number. And I say, well, it's not a big deal for the $14. Well, it is a big deal because it's still 14 bucks. $14 adds up every month. 14, uh, you know, dollars a month times 12 months a year, you're paying like, almost a couple hundred bucks every year that you could just save. Um, also, maybe you're, you're kind of the one that says, you know, I don't know about saving money, but I just don't want a Comcast or somebody to have more money. You know, that's fine too. Uh, also, uh, yeah, so you got the 14 bucks and who's gonna say that that doesn't, you know, that's not gonna go up. It's not gonna go down. It might stay the same for a while, but it's probably gonna go up eventually. Uh, you know, I used to have one that was only like ten dollars. I can remember way back, and it was only like I think it was like five dollars years and years ago. So it's always going to go up, and you're going to be stuck with it. So, okay, who allows you to run their your own modem? Uh, at least these three. I'm not sure what else is available in you know the island area, but uh, those I would think to be the big three uh, satellite and things like that. I'm not sure how that works. I'm not never had satellite, so I'm not actually sure what the handoff is to you like inside the building. Um, so I can't speak to that. But if you're getting like cable or DSL, like I mentioned, a large percentage of people are, then yeah, it'll work. Uh, in fact, there's articles for this. So for example, um, so Xfinity has a, you know, a tech help article that says, you know, how to do it and what's compatible and everything. AT&T has a article on how to connect, you know, your own non-ANTT branded router to the internet. Uh, and WOW has, uh, WOW's page is almost non-existent, but uh, they did put a little thing on here that says it was updated uh, just last year. So um, sounds like it'll work. So moving on. All right, so cable modem. So the first thing to do would be buy a cable modem. So how much are you gonna save, right? So 
$14 a month. Now you can get cable modems from somewhere just like Amazon. And I don't lie, I spent about a hundred bucks on mine. And I probably went a little overboard for the actual internet connection that I have. I almost kind of want to go back and like just return and get something cheaper, but it's already in, it's already working, so that's life. Uh, but if you go to Amazon, for example, and you just search for, say, say you have Comcast, and for, uh, you can just search for cable modem. You know, get pages upon pages of stuff coming back for different models that you can get. Um, like if I just click on this first one, um, Amazon is nice because you have all the reviews and you can see, you know, you'll find somebody that says, yeah, I bought this specific model and it worked totally fine for me in Illinois and with Comcast or whoever and it works. Um, of course, you do have to, you know, Amazon does this thing where they, they throw like 10 different models in one page and now you don't know what the heck review you're looking at, but you can parse all that originally, uh, eventually. So, uh, so this one, for example, you know, compatible with all cable providers, including Xfinity by Comcast, Spectrum Cox, all these other people. Um, they even have one, and we just clicked the first one. There's, yeah, this one here, I mean, you can get it for 30 bucks. So if you just want the bare bones thing, that'll work for you. Similar, if you search for DSL modem, you can find, you know, pages upon pages of DSL compatible modems. Uh, the important thing is just to make sure, you know, you're getting what you, you know, whatever your handoff is from your ISP provider, get that. So if it's Comcast or something, make sure you get something with, uh, you know, a cable, uh, cable jack on it, like a coax cable jack. If it's DSL, make sure you have one that has the DSL port on it. So, you know, I opted to get something that's kind of all in one. I didn't get, um, I got this thing right here, which is kind of the all-in-one, um, you know, modem plus router plus wireless plus switch plus everything. So you can go different ways about it. I chose to get the all-in-one thing because I think less equipment is better, less stuff, less wiring, less stuff you got to deal with. Now the converse would be, you know, this, um, you know, getting. Um, you know, like this picture here is basically like having a modem that's just going to do modem duties and then connecting your own um, equipment behind it, your own wireless equipment behind it, et cetera. And that's fine too. Um, but you can get all ones that do essentially the same thing. So normally you're getting something that looks like this. I um, hope you guys can see the screen here. Um, so you're getting something that looks, if you can't see me or not, well, I'm here. So you get it, I'll show a picture of it later if it doesn't work. So uh, yeah, you can replace with just an all-in-one piece of equipment. Uh, and again, you're searching for you know your different reviews, what your your uh, requirements are. It depends on your your home internet package, what you're getting. So a lot of these, you know, if you're just looking at like the first one that we looked at, um, they're rated for different speeds. So if I know that I you know have like a very fast, like 250 meg connection at home. Don't get the one that only has like 100 megabytes of total throughput. Simple enough, right? So moving on. Uh, oh, and also, yeah. Uh, if you're going with Comcast uh, or something, for example, they actually have on their website, um, so the only one that did this correctly, and they have a special page on here that will tell you what's actually available and what's um, what's available, what's what's officially supported by Comcast. So let's say I, uh, you know, so you go to this page and let's say I'm in um, Blue Island. Let's say I'm at this address. Uh, that. Um, Let's just pick, uh, let's say I'm at 126 in Western. Oh, okay, use zip code. Wanted to do that the first time. All right, so let's say I'm at 60406 and I want, um, try a different address, okay. Let's say I'm at, Oh, 
Six. I didn't write the first time. That's all right. Uh, let's just say I want uh, the simplest, most basic package. Um, I click this find devices, and I should get another page with uh, basically every, every all the models that are known to be compatible with Comcast Internet. Um, I wish you know AT&T and some of these other places had a similar page, but if this is you know what you have at home, then this is the way to go. You can be absolutely sure that you won't have a problem later on if you don't want to just trust you know blindly uh, Amazon reviews or such. So moving on, so let's say then at that point you say, okay, I, I want to do that because I, don't, I you know I want to save money. Um, and spending fourteen dollars a month on this thing that I'm renting and, and I really don't don't need don't need it. Next thing you know is buy something off Amazon or wherever and take it home. And then basically the first thing you want to do is take a look at your already existing configuration. So your modem, no matter who it's from, you should have some customer level access to it and what the configuration is. Uh, so if it's Comcast, for example, it probably looks something like like this page. And basically, you can go in and make a bunch of notes of what your current configuration is. So make a bunch of notes on what the IP address is, what the wireless name is exactly, if there's more than one wireless, um, what the key is for the wireless. The idea here is if you give everything the exact same configuration, then everything will just work automatically. I, in other words, if I replace this thing and I have 10, you know, wireless devices in my house, uh, let's say I have, you know, a bunch of smart TVs and five laptops and, uh, you know, seven phones in my, uh, in my house and a bunch of Chromebooks and uh, Xboxes and Playstations and Nintendo DS and uh, I don't know. I have everything under the sun and everything's already hardwired to say connect to my home network, whatever the name is with whatever my special passphrase is. Give all that information to the new router, everything will work perfectly and you won't have to worry too much about it. So you make notes uh, and you turn it off and you connect the new one. And uh, I, don't know, I might have a couple screenshots of that. Yeah, so like on mine, uh, this is what mine had looked like. Uh, it wasn't terribly difficult at all. And it was just a matter of, you know, kind of down here, you know, giving it the same wireless schema and giving it the same IP address schema and everything. And I would even, a lot of times, you know, you might say, well, everything is just DHCP in my house anywhere. It, it doesn't really matter. I would say, go ahead and maybe even give it the same IP address and everything. The outside is going to be whatever the external address for your ISP is going to be whatever it is. Probably shouldn't even have to worry about that. But internally, just give it whatever it was. If it, your old one was 10 dot something, and then make it uh, make the new one 10 dot something, or just 192 something, whatever internal address schema is normally used. Now, we started a longer conversation about how to do all that, which is probably beyond the result, uh, beyond the scope of this presentation, but. The idea is give it the same info. So here's one screen. Uh, here's another screen of just some settings that I have here. So that's that. And moving on. Oops. Yeah. So uh, what happened is you're going to put the new one in, connect everything, um, give it the same information, and then at least for Comcast, there is then a a kind of provisioning process where you have to do something online to contact them and get your modem activated. Uh, I didn't have to call them or anything, which is good. I really don't like talking with companies like that. Uh, so it's become a lot more streamlined in, in recent years. So there is a, let's see, oh, activation screens. I'll show a couple of those just so you know what to expect if you want to do this. So. Uh, when I connected mine, the first thing that came up was a page that looked like this, where you know I already had an account with them. They already had my phone number on file. All I had to do was, as soon as I tried to go to the internet, the only thing that came up was the Xfinity page, which was the activation process. I had to verify my phone number. It sent me a text message. I plugged in a code, 
And finally, it said that it was activating. And the last step was simply, congratulations, you're, you should be activated, and it would take up to 30 minutes. This did take 30 minutes for me. Um, I think, I mean, I walked away for like 15 minutes and it still wasn't working. And I thought, oh, great, did I do something wrong? And then another 15 minutes went by and I tried it again and it was working. That was it. So that's the entire process for Xfinity. So uh, I don't know specifically about, uh, you know, DSL or, or how like um, WOW Internet works and things like that. But I imagine there's a similar process. It may involve a phone call or something, I'm not sure. But they shouldn't stop you from running your own equipment in your own house if you have an account with them. So that's the end of that. Uh, finally, you know, once that's working and you have the internet, you can go around your house and check everything else. But every, if you've done everything it, the same way it was before, everything should be working automatically. Uh, all your devices will just reconnect to because it's the same wireless name and it's the same key. So everything should be good there. And uh, check everything, do a speed test if you want, make sure you're getting what you're actually subscribed for. And um, then finally, you know, return your equipment to, you know, in my case I had Comcast, so there's, uh, there's a drop off point, there's many of them I can drop it off to, and then you shouldn't see the uh, thing on your bill anymore. So that's it, I should save you 14 bucks a month at least, and probably that'll be, probably go up sometime this year, probably be even more. And uh, any questions, comments? I don't hear anything. Well, I'd like to thank you all for joining. It's been a pleasure. I'm gonna go ahead and end the program now. I'm sure that uh, you know, next time I'll, there'll be uh, a lot more questions and concerns and comments and uh, we'll look forward to those. So my name is Mike, I'm with Blind on Public Library and this was our presentation and thank you for watching. <laughs>